There are lots of important equations when we talk about fields. I really like this uh, image here. This is from, uh, do you remember Felix Baumgartner? A few years ago with Red Bull, he uh, jumped from extremely high up in a balloon. So uh, anyway, so he has so much potential, I get it. So what I'm gonna do is show you um, some of the equations that show up on your data booklet. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I really think that this particular topic, a lot of the times it's just a matter of decoding what they're asking for. In other words, I don't think that many of the questions are, are that difficult. It's just that you need to be able to look at the question and figure out what is it they're really asking me for. So that's why I've got this big giant mess right here uh, because this is the way it looks on your um, data booklet. Keep in mind the green ones aren't quite there. The green ones are off to the side, but I'm going to put them in here as well. So if you look at this, first of all, the left side is all gravitational and the right side is electric. So if you know how it works for gravitational, then you know how it works for electric. What I think is really interesting, to see how tantalizingly similar these different equations are to each other? For example, the gravitational force, look at this, it's a constant times a mass times another mass divided by the distance between them squared. Whereas the electric, it's a constant times instead of a mass, it's a charge. Um, so there's two charges times the distance uh, divided by, sorry, the distance of, uh, between them squared. Do you notice they look really similar, don't they? And this is what I think leads a lot of people to think that maybe there is some sort of grand unified theory of the universe because look at at least the way the mathematics uh, look. So it seems like, I mean, obviously since uh, physics or at least mathematics seems to be the language of the universe, uh, maybe there's something to it. We haven't quite figured out yet exactly how gravitation, for example, and electromagnetism are related, but doesn't it look kind of similar? So. Let's actually start by decoding things. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. I'm gonna start with some of the easier ones just so we can sort of get uh, uh, going a little bit here. So let's label this right here. What is EP? I hope you know, uh, I'm gonna write grav everywhere for this, but this is, uh, this is the potential energy. That's what this is. This is potential energy. So are you okay with this? This is gravitational potential energy measured in joules. This is the electric potential energy. So electric potential energy. And again, this is measured in joules. So, and this is the gravitational. So the reason I'm doing this is just because this is one of the easier ones, isn't it? Most people see that E with a little subscript P, usually you know that that's electric uh, or gravitational, but potential energy. So that's usually okay. So is this one right here, I hope. This FG, that's a grav, I hope you're okay with the grav short here, gravitational force. And what's force measured in? Newtons. Well then if that's a gravitational force, this must be the electric force, which is measured in, oddly enough, Newtons. Of course, we've got the charges, which are measured in coulombs. Here we've got the masses. We've got the R, which is the distance. Most people know those. So do you see we've already labeled some of them? Now comes a slightly sneakier one. So let's do this one right here. This one right here is the gravitational field strength. We saw these in another chapter, right? So this is gravitational field strength. That means this must be the electric field strength. Now, what kind of units can we use for these? Uh, we have another equation for gravitational field strength. I mean, yes, we could say it's um, meters per second squared, for example, for gravitational field strength, but I think it's better to do the uh, other equation that we have, which goes, so what is it, G equals F over M. So in that case right here, it would be in Newtons per kilogram. That's the one from uh, the SL topics. So that's maybe the better unit for it. Just like uh, electric field strength, well, it'll be in Newtons, but instead of kilograms, we have coulombs. So that's that. Finally, now comes the weird one, which is this V here. Um, so I'm gonna label these right here. This right here is called the electric potential. And I don't mean potential energy. This is gonna be really important. Do you notice we had potential energy. Here we have electric potential. That's it, just electric potential. Just like this here is called the gravitational potential. And again, we don't have any other uh, things for us, just gravitational potential. So that might seem a little bit weird, okay? Cause you're used to seeing like potential energies. Here we just call it potential. 
You might be more familiar with the electric one because we've been talking about a potential difference, but that's why this V here, you know, that's the V that's measured in, in this case right here, volts. Um, but you could also say another unit, and I'll show you uh, why it is. I know this, this is joules per coulomb. And this one right here will be in, let's see, this would be in joules per kilogram. How did I know this? It's not that I'm super clever. I just looked at this equation here for work. So I'm going to define that one as well. So this right here is just the work done. Work done. And work is a, is a form of energy. So it's measured in joules. So what I've done is I didn't quite know what units I should use here. This one has some weird units because of G. But look at this V right here, this gravitational potential. That's the same one that's right here. So because of that, in my head, I just put W divided by M. And you see that that gives me work, which is in joules, divided by the mass, which is in kilograms. Same thing over here. This um, electric potential is work divided by Q. So that's why it's joules per coulomb. Now, this may not seem super obvious to you, but actually, this is everything you need. This is all the equations you're going to be using in this chapter. So, uh, well, especially uh, for this section here. So you might have the force of attraction uh, between two objects, or you might have the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges. Um, we have the gravitational potential energy, like I said, EP. Do you notice we have another version of it right here too? Look, we have VG right here. And can you see it also looks the same? Look, it still goes. Uh, if I wanted VG by itself, couldn't I do the... Um, gravitational potential energy divided by the mass to get VG. And again, I get the same units of joules per kilogram. Same thing with the electric, right? The electric potential energy. If I wanted the gravi uh, the electric potential, VE, by itself, I would just do EP divided by Q. And again, joules per coulomb. So this all is uh, self-consistent at least. And then we've got the gravitational field strength. That's this G, which is the same as the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And we have electric field strength, which is just this other quantity. And in this case right here, it's the change in electric potential divided by the change in distance. So it's basically how potential changes with distance. And then we have these uh, sort of more raw and pure equations here. Now, what I'd like to do then is go maybe a little bit deeper in this one right here for gravitational potential. Uh, just to, oops. <clears throat> so uh, for gravitational potential, remember that's this... That's this VG here, and this is just like this VE here, electric potential. I want to look at this equation again. So this W equals M delta V. This is on your data booklet. The reason I wanted to look at it is because the definition of it is in the equation. And I've seen quite often on exams, you're asked to literally just define what is gravitational potential. So can you see, you can actually say, well, gravitational potential is, can you see it's just work over mass? Like that would just be this equation. I'm just rearranging it. And there is your definition. Look, it's the work done per unit mass. And then we define it as this. We define it as, this is a little bit weird, actually. What we do is we consider that off to infinity, so at a distance of infinity, we consider that to be where the energy is zero. So because of that, if you're going to bring an object from zero all the way to you, <clears throat> its energy actually goes down when you come closer to you, right? Its potential energy goes down. You know this because, you know, if you lift something up, it's got a lot of gravitational potential energy. If it's down lower, it's lower. So in this case, you start off at zero already, and that means when you bring it closer, it's lower than zero. So in this sense, this is really weird, but that's why it's actually negative. And we can then use this equation here that, uh, can you see this VG here is proportional to negative one over R? So that's what I'm going to write down here. I'm going to say that. So I'm going to say, maybe we'll do it like this. So I'll say VG is proportional to negative one over R. Do you remember what a 1 over x graph looks like? Normally, 1 over x graph goes like this. So negative 1 over x flips it across the x-axis. That's why this right here goes like this. This is the VG graph. It looks kind of weird. A lot of people really struggle with this because this is not that intuitive. You, uh, the, my favorite way of seeing this is almost... Uh, when you see it called a potential well, I kind of like calling it that because it almost implies like you're in a, a deep hole and you have to climb out of it. And in that sense, you can say you have to climb out of the potential well in order to get uh, really far away. And we're actually going to define that as the escape speed, for example, is what speed do you have to go in order to climb out of the potential well? Of course, we have the same kind of definition we can do for electric potential. Uh, in this case, it doesn't have to be a negative. It'll all depend on the charges. But we, again, define it as the work done 
per unit charge to bring a small charge from infinity to some point. And that's kind of all we need there. And finally, just a very minor thing here, we got these equipotential lines. That's where the gravitational potential, remember that's Vg, or the electric potential, Ve, is the same. So these are places where, you know, these will usually be sort of nice straight lines like this right here. These will be places where the gravitational potential is the same. It's almost like, I imagine like with uh, water waves. If you saw water waves and from an airplane, for example, you're watching them, you'd see these, these sort of crests here, these places where, you know, maybe the water has the same amplitude or not actually amplitude. The, maybe they're all crests actually, like the top of the wave. Like a side view could be, you know, where like this right here, these would be like these places right here from the top, you'd see these as these lines. <clears throat> Those would be places where instead of the crest, you know, would be the same for the water uh, analogy, this is the place where the gravitational potential would be the same or the electric potential. So these are things called equipotential lines. Again, I like it because the word tells you everything. Right? Equi means equal and potential means this VG or VE. So this is where the VG is equal or VE is equal. And that's all you need. That's all the theory you actually need to solve a whole bunch of different kinds of questions. Let's try it out.